Okay, welcome everyone to another Dow Labs webinar. Uh, uh, this one is um, called Cold Season Solutions, How to Help Your Patients Survive the Worst Winter in a Century. Uh, I'm Dr. Eric Karchmer, I'm one of the co-founders of Dow Labs, and I'm here with um, another one of my co-founders, John McGarvey, who was also the CEO. And uh, we're gonna talk to you today about um, our two uh, new formulas that are just coming out, and we think they're a really important um, new toolkit for you during this cold season and to help you, um, help you and your patients get through it uh, safely. Um, so today's agenda, we're going to begin with a few uh, remarks from John McGarvey, uh, and then we'll come back to me, and I'm going to give you kind of an, just sort of the background and overview of uh, how to understand um, these formulas, what was the, the thought process and how we put them together, um, um, help clear up some of, uh, I think, some of our confusions about how to deal with um, what we sort of call cold and flu season ailments or cold season ailments, or in Chinese, it's really just called gan mao. Um, and then we're gonna talk to you about um, our Dow Labs approach to it. And um, we think it's very exciting and we're, um, Super thrilled to kind of be able to bring this to the to the market for you. Uh, so I'm going to start by uh, turning things over to John McGarvey. Uh, thanks, Eric, uh, for uh, that introduction. And uh, we don't just think that these are exciting; they are really exciting. Um, I just wanted one technical point. Can you see me, or is it just still on the screen? Because I'm going to have some visual aids here. So if you want to, um, uh, well, maybe we'll stop. Let me stop the screen share, and we'll um, then we should be able to see you. Very good. We'll do that. Um, I'll keep my remarks brief because the uh, the real meat of everything in today's webinar is to talk about the formulas and the, the approach that Eric has designed, which is going to be really relevant and hopefully very effective for your patients and the people in your network and in your community. But if I could take a second just to kind of talk a bit about the new formulas and our approach to them, because there's some significant differences that are exciting. Um, our approach is new, and um, I think uh, hopefully it's one that will resonate both with, with you and your practices and, and the people that you're treating. Uh, you know, our mission at Dow Labs is, is one of creating uh, uh, products, formulas in a, in a very authentic way, uh, but one that's slightly innovative as well. And so since we launched, our approach has always been with flavors, with packaging that's approachable, trying to make things as convenient as possible. And that's still very much uh, at the forefront and core with what we do. Um, You've talked to us over the last few years, either directly through Jen, um, with past colleagues, um, to me directly with the sort of the needs, the feedback we put out surveys. And a pillar of our company is making this very much a shared experience. Uh, we know what we know, and there's a lot more that we don't know. And so anytime you guys tell us what you need or what we're doing wrong or what we could do better, we, we do take that to heart. And we recognize the challenges that you know some products, be it Dow Labs or other Chinese herbal medicine companies might have, you know, uh, aren't necessarily always suited to the end user. So with that in mind, um, we wanted to keep the eye towards innovation uh, and give you guys, as Eric said, another tool uh, in your toolkit. And what's exciting about our cold season for formulas, and we're calling them cold season for, uh, solutions, is that we're actually, wait for it, we're coming out in pill form. Um, it's a departure from the other items that we've brought to market, either you know the, the foundational formulas, sleep or uh, joint vitality that we've added on. Um, with an eye towards innovation, our approach with pills isn't just simply putting them in a bottle, um, but we're doing some really cool, unique things, particularly with these two formulas where you might have to mix and match and, and do so in a way that you know, is, is custom and unique to the constitution or the needs of, of your patient. So what we're gonna be doing is coming out and releasing two formulas, um, but not in a jar, but like we've done before, we're gonna put these in individual packets, okay? And these are gonna be available on mydowlabs.com and the resource room here when we launch in a couple of days. Um, but what's really interesting and what this is all about is it's not in a bottle, okay? I have talked with many of you guys in the past about the issues as it relates to the, the sticker shock, the trying to get your patient to, to buy more of sort of a regimen or a series of pills or powders that they need and recognizing that in some cases there is that, that stock of, well, how much does this cost and whatnot? So what we've done uh, Eric and my colleagues and I have come up with a way that we've uh, kind of pre-dosed these for you. Okay, so that's step one. Number two, um, we've tried to keep uh, the packaging and the way we've branded it very, very approachable. Okay, um, as you'll be able to see, and you'll see it better on the website, we've given these names like we have our other formulas. You know, immunity support is uh, Jade Windscreen, Yu Ping Feng Song. Um, but in this particular case, we've got Breathe Clear, which is inspired by Drusla Song. 
um, which is a classic formula. So as you'll see is on the front, we've made it very approachable. So your patient and you for that matter will kind of know what the benefit is and what it's meant to do. But keeping with the eye towards authenticity, we've tried to make the back um, very professional, very clean, very uh, uh, professional, um, the, the way that the, the herbs and the formulas themselves uh, warrant having that sort of professional look. And what's cool as well, and it's going to be tough to see, but we actually put a little window in there so you and your patient can actually see the, uh, the herbs or the, pardon me, the pills, because that's kind of something that in the, the post-COVID world, that transparency and being able to see things is, is something that's really, really important. So again, we've got the approachability, um, but then we've got the professional look as well. Eric's going to talk about the other formula bounce back. This one's proprietary and, and the way it kind of interacts. But again, um, these are going to be able to pre-dose. The second sort of aspect to that is it's going to give you the ability to customize. Okay, Rather than just a jar with 120, 150 pills, 100 pills, in, in, which in some cases they only have to take a few days of, you're going to have the ability to just give your patient or your client what they need. Do they need three days worth? Do you recommend they take seven days worth? Do they need 15 days You know, more? That's going to be up to you. And when we kind of give you these uh, and the patient, client, um, we've also kind of come up with this nifty little kit that's uh, branded as well that you're going to be able to put the formulas in there. Okay. So again, rather than a one size fits all with just a, a jar, we've come up with a solution that we think will be um, very, very effective for you. And then on top of that, um, we've got uh, a really great insert, a series of tools that you'll be able to, in, to give your patient that includes uh, a description of the, the herbs themselves, how to use them and whatnot. We've got a practitioner one as well, so you can customize it based on the specific need of, of the patient that you're working with. But again, you're gonna have the ability to give them only what they need and not beyond. Now, how are you gonna be able to get this? Uh, it's gonna be available in the resource room. We've got pre-kitted bundles that you'll be able to procure. Um, we've set them up in a sort of a low uh, introductory way. You just have to buy 21 of them or, or inventory 21 of them at a time. And then within each of those, uh, you'll get the accompanying uh, little packet that they're gonna go into and the accompanying inserts. And then you'll also have the ability, if you like the packaging and whatnot, you can buy more of those, more inserts, all that kind of stuff at a really nominal cost. We're not making any money off of any of the packaging uh, whatsoever. So those will all be in there. We did 21 because while you can tailor, um, this is a new approach for us and hopefully for you as well. Um, we thought that having uh, uh, three increments of seven so you could give it to your patient for a week might be approachable. You don't have to kind of hold on to that. We're going to test and, and tweak as we go along here. Um, but that was the, the methodology behind uh, the, the 21. Very much so you will be able to use your Lincoln code in this approach. Okay. So on the website, when we launch, you're going to have the ability to customize uh, for your patient. If they just want three of these and seven of these, seven of these, three of these, none of these, all of these, that kind of thing. So you're going to be able to do that. And then again, we'll fulfill it here uh, at our uh, fulfillment center. Uh, it'll have the, the pouch that I just showed you and the insert and those, those tools. So um, all of this is very exciting. We think we've been working pretty hard on it. Uh, we've been very responsive to kind of what you need, we think, and then as well, trying to solve some problems for both you and uh, uh, your patient as well. Um, if there's questions, which we anticipate there's gonna be a lot of, uh, Jen Ward uh, would be your first point of contact, um, uh, along with uh, hello at mydowlabs.com, where we've beefed up uh, our, uh, our infrastructure there so we can respond to your questions. Um, or you can always reach out to Eric or I. Um, so that's the exciting sort of sales component, our, our path to market, if you will. Um, but the real power comes obviously from the herbs themselves. And that's when uh, our uh, colleague Eric comes back into the discussion. So um, we look forward to your participation. We look forward to your feedback. Um, these are timely formulas against the backdrop of 2020 um, for reasons that you as practitioners can understand. Uh, particularly as Eric kind of walks through the different patterns and whatnot. There are also some, some other resources coming. We created some cheat sheets uh, because one of these for formulas is proprietary. All that's going to be coming your way in the uh, email form from Jen and then as well available in the resource room. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to hand it back over to, uh, to Eric to talk through uh, the formulas and the methodology. Uh, thanks very much, John. Um, uh, John is uh, um, at uh, our office in, uh, up in um, Minneapolis. Uh, behind me is uh, my own personal office, my uh, my laboratory, so to speak, uh, where I make the herbs. So um, excuse the chaos. This is a, uh, uh, but this is you know how it works in an actual clinical practice. So let me get back to the um, uh, to the slides for you all, and we'll um, jump back into the to the lecture and uh, continue. 
So, okay, let's let's continue. Let's get into our uh, overview here. Oh, excuse me. Um, and so, what we're really talking about here is um, what we're calling sort of cold season ailments. Uh, um, in Chinese in Chinese medicine, would really be all fall under one one term, which is gan mao. That's the Chinese term. That's the, the also the traditional Chinese term as well. Um, and so we really what we're really talking about here is we're talking about how to treat gan mao. Uh, so that's absolutely essential for this winter when we've got uh, viruses of all kinds uh, um, circulating um, the um, from the pandemic to just whatever else is out there. Uh, and what's key uh, in Chinese medicine is going to be this concept of wind. So I want you to all hold on to that concept. Wind is going to be at the root of kind of understanding what we're doing here at Dow Labs with our, with our cold season solutions um, and how you really want to approach these formulas. This is going to make all the difference in the world. I'll, I'll explain why. Um, so as I mentioned, this is, we've got to know how to treat gan mao. We've got to know how to treat these cold season ailments correctly. Uh, and, the truth of, and the truth of the matter is that it's not only is it essential for this winter, but this is really sort of basic, you know, these are basic, these are basic skills that every practitioner should have. Um, but unfortunately we often don't. Um, and it's, uh, this has been, this is true for me. I've had to kind of, um, and I'm gonna write about it um, in another blog article about sort of how I uh, developed these formulas, uh, but we all have to learn. And it's not something we necessarily get a ton of practice at. We often lack the proper skills and experience and for a couple of reasons. Um, one, in our clinics, um, we typically see patients with chronic disorders. Uh, and so these are patients who have usually been around the block uh, in terms of uh, seeing various biomedical doctors. We've seen a number of specialists. They um, almost always come with a biomedical diagnosis. Now, occasionally I get a few that don't, but, but, um, but most people do. Most people come to an acupuncturist or Chinese medicine doctor um, second. Um, and even in China, which is where I did my training, um, doctor, Chinese medicine doctors are, are expected to kind of give a biomedical diagnosis first in some sense, and then kind of get to their Chinese medicine uh, treatment. So there's more, you, you have more chance to see these kinds of patients in China, but um, nonetheless, there is still a, a, a general trend of treating folks with chronic disorders, uh, in, in, even in China. Uh, now, second, another just ver kind of um, uh, logistical issue is that a lot of patients who kind of catch, you know, they'll catch a bug, come down with something, they get sick, what have you, uh, they generally cancel their appointments. This happens to me all the time, and, and uh, pa even patients I've worked with for years, uh, they'll cancel their appointment. The next time they come in, they're like, hey, you know, when you're, when you're sick, if you really want, I can help you treat that. Uh, but most people have a, um, you know, have the mentality of just, that maybe this is something you can't treat with Chinese medicine or just writing it out. Or uh, today with COVID-19, um, we, really we really don't want people who are sick, whether it's with COVID-19 or something else coming into our clinics. So uh, we have even less chance now to kind of develop these, these skills. Um, and, th and then lastly, I think the last challenge here is one of really education. Um, when, if you're studying herbal medicine and um, if you're studying herbal medicine, uh, in your textbooks, you're going to learn about a whole bunch of kind of herbal formulas that seem to treat gamal, that seem to treat these cold season ailments. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, there isn't any one approach. And in fact, there's maybe too many formulas. We learn a whole bunch of things and you might learn a whole bunch of acupuncture uh, and cupping um, and moxibustion techniques. Um, and it's hard to know what works best. And if you're not seeing these kinds of patients on a regular basis, uh, you're not going to really be able to hone those clinical skills. Uh, so it's kind of a tricky problem. Now, on top of that, there's one, there's one more issue that makes it even more confusing. Um, and this really is for those of you who are a little bit more steeped in the herbal traditions and in the history of Chinese medicine, uh, but you're going to encounter this in your training, which is that we really have almost two competing approaches within Chinese medicine. So on top of just a whole bunch of formulas, there's sort of almost um, two theories here. And we might call one of them sort of the cold damage approach. This is based on the formulas and sort of um, uh, theories that come out of the treaties of cold damage disorders. And this is one of the, the most ancient texts in Chinese medicine, and it's an extremely, extremely important clinical text. Uh, or in contrast to that, we also have what's sort of known as the warm illness. I like to actually call it the warm disorders approach. Um, uh, and that is a, uh, that's an approach that emerges in China in the, you might say the last um, three to four centuries, but really primarily really the last sort of two centuries, particularly sort of um, 
19th century, 18th, 19th century China, 20th century as well. Um, uh, and by the 20th century, these two approaches, uh, these two schools really that become schools uh, are really sort of clashing. Um, if any of you are interested, I've written a, um, uh, an academic piece on sort of the clash between these two camps in the early 20th century China, um, which is a lot of fun to read. Um, but, you know, bottom line is both of these approaches sort of seem to, to treat the same basic problems, but they've got radically different theories. The Shanghan approach uh, will use warming herbs generally, the warm illness approach will use cooling herbs, very different formulas. Um, and so I think one of the things that emerges out of this is that we're confused about what to use. Uh, and I, just, I can just tell you from my own training in China, we're sort of taught that these things kind of go together, but not we're not too clear about how these different schools will go, to, go together. And it's sort of all thrown at you. And I suspect um, many of you have had the same experience of not knowing how to make heads or tails of uh, <clears throat> these two approaches. We can't totally unravel that, uh, those distinctions today. Uh, we're going to kind of narrow it back down to this problem of Gamal. Uh, but as you see uh, here, I'm, I'm, I lean heavily towards the cold damage approach. Uh, and I'll explain why in, a, um, in the next slide. Um, so, or excuse me, in the next couple of slides. So uh, just to kind of um, help you kind of visualize some of the distinctions, at least in the herbal medicine world between these two camps, um, on the left side, there may be some formulas that you're familiar with. These are really cold damage. These are formulas that come out of the treaties of cold damage disorder, cinnamon twig decoction, ephedra decoction, minor blue-green um, dragon decoction. Um, these are very old, ex extremely uh, important formulas. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, you might be familiar with uh, mulberry twig and chrysanthemum drinks, uh, sangjuin. The, the big one that I think people know the best is honeysuckle and forsythia powder, uh, yin chao san. That's really, these are all warm illness formulas, clear the yin sector decoction. Uh, <clears throat> and so, um, you know, we're presented with some like, Pretty, these are kind of quite different formulas that do very different things. We're presented with very stark uh, uh, distinctions here. How do we know when to go with cinnamon twig decoction or honeysuckle and forsythia powder? It's really, it can be hard to know. Uh, so um, uh, <clears throat> my rule of thumb here is gonna be basically, I think most of the things that fall under this rubric of Gamal, of kind of a cold season ailment are really gonna be in the really going to fall under the rubric of the cold damage approach. And that's because wind, so back to that concept of wind, is really the main pathogen here. Uh, and we have to drive it out through sweating. So sweating is the, is the main approach. It's driving out the wind and any other accompanying pathogens. Um, <clears throat> and that's how, that's how you're going to deal with it in, in the cold damage approach. Um, the warm illness approach really emphasizes warmth. Uh, wen xie is the Chinese. They really emphasize the, the warm factor, the warmth as the main pathogen, not wind, although you can have wind and warmth together, uh, but warmth is a key thing. And then and the main issue um, in the warm illness approach is that uh, this warmth factor uh, damages fluids. So sweating is forbidden. You can't sweat. Uh, you don't want to sweat out the problem. Um, now, there's, again, we can't go too deep into when you choose one or the other, but in the case of Gamal, as I mentioned before, and I'm going to emphasize this in the subsequent slides, wind is really the, is the key thing, not the warmth. We can get confused here, but it's really, it's really warmth or heat. It's really wind uh, is the problem. So let me explain this a little bit more. Um, so when we, when we, um, and the, so let me get into some of the key principles here. So when we have a uh, gamao or a kind of a cold season ailment, um, you know, these can be caused from a biomedical perspective by uh, literally a couple hundred different um, viruses, um, but they present with the same um, kind of basic, they have the same basic presentation uh, of kind of fever, chills, body aches, headaches. So what we really need to do here is to release the exterior and drive out the wind. Um, and then we're going to, and the other really key principle here is that we need to use warm, acrid herbs to open the pores and enable us to drive out that wind. Um, so why do we need these two principles? Well, first, first key point is that the illness, the gamal, presents in the exterior, right? So how do we know it's in the exterior? We know by the presentation. The presentation is fever, chills, body aches, headaches, nasal congestion, a scratchy throat, 
um, these things aren't um, affecting sort of the deep uh, internal organs of the body. They're really literally on the surface of the body. And that's what's meant by this concept of exterior. Uh, now we want to uh, we want to uh, be clear to um, some people will have a high fever. A fever is not necessarily a sign of heat in Chinese medicine. Uh, it's really going to be, um, it's really a sign of sort of the struggle between uh, your body to drive out the pathogen and the pathogen to kind of like make its way uh, deeper into the, into the body. Uh, that's the, the explanation in, in Chinese medicine. Um, so we want to be sure that you don't get misled uh, uh, into thinking that we've got a warm illness condition just because we have a fever. Uh, now, you may have wind and heat together. Uh, that's totally possible. Um, uh, but I, I would contend that more often we actually have wind and cold together, uh, or sometimes we may have a little bit of both. But um, wind is really the predominant thing, um, not, not, the, not the warmth, not the heat. And then the other really key important um, principle here, and that's really important how we approach this, is that um, in Chinese medicine, we have, we have acrid herbs, some that are warm, some that are cooling, but the acrid herbs are what you need to drive out the wind and what's called release the exterior, jie biao. Um, and so it's only when you do that, only when you, and only with sort of the warmth of these herbs that the pores can kind of open and you can kind of get that gentle sweat. Um, this is really what you want. Um, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, in the, in the treaty of the cold emerson disorder, patients are advised to uh, you know, drink a, a bowl of warm kanji and get under a, a heavy blanket and uh, to help with that, help with that sweating, sweating it out. Um, but so this is what you need: the warm, acrid herbs to open the exterior, open the pores, and gently let the and drive the pathogens out with a gentle sweat. It shouldn't be a, a fierce sweat; it should just be a, a relatively mild one. Um, now we do have cooling acrid herbs in Chinese medicine, uh, but the truth is, um, uh, and you don't necessarily learn this in your early, cor early courses on herbal medicine, they aren't that powerful in terms of that pungency, that uh, acrid uh, quality. They don't really open up the uh, pores, they can't really drive out the wind, except in sort of the mildest cases. So sometimes I think people get away with using things like uh, yin chao san or these other uh, warm illness formulas. Uh, but the fact of the matter is they really aren't that. And, and if you break it down and look at the formulas, they really aren't designed to like drive out wind. Um, and they really don't have a lot of acrid herbs in them. Uh, so they're really not suited for what we would call gut mal, these cold season ailments. Uh, so these are two key principles. Let me give you a couple more. Uh, now, one other thing that can really help to, uh, and this is um, going to be important for the sort of the formula, the, the dial lab formulas, is that in addition to kind of um, uh, the warm acrid herbs, you also need some herbs that are sort of uh, uplifting, uh, as well as sometimes downbearing to kind of match it. So by uplifting, um, this is in Chinese, this would really be to. Uh, um, that have this upward driving process and uplifting can be a, perhaps a confusing term, but you really wanna take advantage of the fact that the, the pathogens are in the exterior. They are close to the surface of the body, lift them, disperse them, get them out. Um, and so, as I mentioned here in the bullet, you have, uh, some herbs like Xiong Ma or Chai Hu or Gu Gen uh, can be very helpful that they have a, they have a lifting property to them. Uh, Xiong Ma, um, for instance, is actually in our bounce back formula. Uh, so that's gonna help you get to uh, get things open. Now, sometimes it still can be hard. I mean, you might have a patient with a fever um, and this is going a little bit beyond what's in our formulas, but just for general principles here. Um, sometimes you have to kind of open the bowels a little bit. Uh, sometimes there can be uh, heat or something can be trapped in the bowels and you might use um, a gentle sort of purgative to open up the bowels um, uh, uh, and um, in, in part, but also because we know that the large intestine pairs with the lungs, this sort of opens up the chi mechanisms. Uh, so sometimes you need to have um, uplifting and downbearing herbs together to open up the chi mechanism. In bounce back, we don't have anything to open up the bowels, but we do have some uh, downbearing herbs that kind of um, match that uplifting motion of other herbs to kind of get that balance and get the chi mechanism moving again. Um, now, it's also important to recognize that although wind is really the, the key pathogen in, the, in a case of gout mao, um, other things, as we know, can be, uh, wind can carry other pathogens. It can carry heat, dampness, phlegm, food stagnation. Uh, for children, fright, 
um, can be uh, you can have you can have seizures, which lead to seizures. Uh, there can be various deficiencies, a chi deficiency. Um, and so, if you were designing your own herbs with uh, kind of a, a pharmacy like I've got behind me, then you kind of want to mix and match and add a few things into. Um, uh, if there's a little bit of heat, you want to drain that heat. If there's a little bit of dampness, you want to you want to um, transform it. You want to um, use your fragrant herbs to get it out, etc. Um, uh, food stagnation, use something to, to, to dissolve that food stagnation. Um, so those would be, those, these two principles would be um, even more appropriate if you were designing your own formula. Um, so uh, there is uh, in our formula bounce back, which I'll talk about in a moment, uh, there is an attempt to kind of, uh, to sort of uh, adjust for the, the most likely sorts of things here. So a little, you might have a little bit of heat showing up, that's very common, some dampness. So we sort of we've sort of adjusted for, the, we've, we've tried to accommodate and adjust for those possibilities. Um, and then one more thing to keep in mind here is that where is this going? Where is the, what, what can happen with the gut mal? Uh, now you may know uh, if you've studied the warm illness approach, you know that we've got four sectors. We've got the Wei, Qi, Ying, Xue sectors. So um, we, um, that's very important for war, uh, warm illnesses. But as I said, with gamma, we're really talking about it as something that fits much better with a cold damage approach. And in this situation, we're probably moving into the lungs, right? We're moving down the airways into the lungs kind of as, as, as understood expansively in, in Chinese medicine. Uh, and we're gonna see a change in presentation. So this is where we might expect to see some cough, uh, perhaps phlegm, not always phlegm, but certainly an irritated throat will go with that cough. Um, and these things might be in addition to the exterior pattern. So you still may have the fever and chills um, and body aches. Now, now you've added in a cough. Um, so in this case, now we need to have some additional treatment principles um, um, <clears throat> to help deal with this development. Uh, here we want to continue to drive out the wind, but now we need to facilitate lung chi. We need to both, both move it out and down the lungs as understood in Chinese medicine, Chinese medicine they, they, they move the qi out and they move the qi down. So you need some herbs that um, have that property of moving the lung qi in both those directions. Um, and that is how you sort of ultimately end up to stop coughing. You're going to use um, uh, herbs that typically dissolve phlegm and stop coughing. <clears throat> So uh, this means that if if the if the presentation moves moves inward moves to the interior and this is typically going to be the lungs then we need to have some a different kind of um, treatment available. Um, so kind of based on this, based on the fact that most things that we call gan mao or kind of a cold season ailment are going to start in the interior and if they go anywhere they're probably going to the lungs. Uh, we've tried to come up with a, a, a two step approach two formulas that are going to be able to deal with um, a large majority, you know, they're, they're always there. There's, uh, we know that there can be um, many unique developments in any particular patient, um, but these are formulas that are going to deal with, think, with a large majority of cases of, of gan mao or kind of a cold season ailment. So these are our, our formulas, bounce back and breathe clear. So let me show you how it, how it kind of works and how this can be a really effective solution for um, most of um, most of your patients that uh, present with a present with a cold, particularly particularly in this winter, you know where we've got so many dangerous viruses out there. <clears throat> so, step one is really this uh, this proprietary formula uh, bounce back. And today I'm not going to talk too much about the compass. I'm not going to talk too much about the composition. Uh, that I, that for those of you who are kind of into that, I can I, I think I'll design another webinar to address that specifically. But um, again, as we know, gamma begins in the exterior, uh, fever chills, headaches, body aches, nasal congestion, a scratchy throat. Um, that, you know, we might call that typically just an everyday language like a head cold. Uh, this is one bounce back is gonna be your ideal formula. Uh, and this formula really kind of encapsulates some of those treatment principles I just discussed. It's really at the foundation are warm and acrid herbs. Um, with some up bearing and down bearing ones to kind of really open up the chi mechanism, uh, as well as some additional uh, additional herbs that kind of go to the head and nasal patches, as well as soothe the throat. Uh, there are some, it's not just warming herbs, there are also some cooling herbs there. So it's a really very balanced formula. Um, 
I'm going to write another blog article and, and maybe this will be part of a, a subsequent webinar about how I designed it this way. Um, and there's a very interesting history um, to it. Uh, I will say just kind of in um, briefly, it really comes out of some of the research I've done on the debates between the cold damage school and the warm illness camps that, uh, and for those of you who don't know this, there was a um, sort of a raging debate between these two camps in the early 20th century. Um, some of the some of the most respected doctors from that era, the ones we really know the know the best, generally fall into that cold damage ca camp. They were very critical of the warm illness camps. Uh, but um, in my own research, um, I became very interested in some of these uh, some of these individuals. And the folks who in influenced me the most in, in designing this formula were not so much for those historical figures but actually students of them uh, who went on to become very um, important figures in more contemporary China and lead, leading physicians in, um, in 20, 20th century China. Uh, so it's a really kind of um, interesting kind of history to uh, how this formula got put together. And uh, it's something I've used in um, my clinical practice and with my family members uh, for years and years now. And I just found that it just works as a, as a great general formula for most cases. Uh, now, as my uh, colleague uh, John McGarvey said, uh, we're not we're now selling these as um, tablets, and um, uh, and you're going to see each each package is a daily dose, and so we recommend that you um, prescribe three pills two times a day uh, for your patients. There's going to be six pills um, in a packet. Uh, however, um, and those of you who have a little bit of experience here, when when somebody gets a cold or a patient gets a cold, you do want to kind of hit it hard. Uh, the warm, acrid herbs are also part of that. They're, they're hard hitting, they're stronger than those cooling acrid herbs. So you wanna hit it hard, you wanna drive it out. Um, and so sometimes when symptoms are a little bit more severe, you can go beyond the six pills and you can go up to, uh, we're sort of recommending sort of a maximum of nine pills uh, per day. Uh, so don't be, afraid to, don't be afraid to do that with your patients. Um, that's, that's fine, especially in those kind of critical first uh, couple of days. Uh, this is really going to help you to prevent um, prevent you from going sort of to the next stage where the things might move to the in interior. Um, however, you know, patients are going to come to you. They may not come to you on day one, but they may be day three. It, things may have already moved into the interior. So this is where we get to step two. Um, and if things have moved into the lungs, we might, this is going to be a little bit more what we might call a chest cold. And sometimes it just happens. It just goes there very quickly. Um, you really are going to require some additional herbs. Um, and you're uh, and you're going to know that it's moved in the interior because you're going to have a cough. That's the key presentation. Now it's in the lungs, some, uh, quite possibly some phlegm, although not absolutely, and some throat irritations. Um, at this stage, you can really use um, this classic formula, just so sad, which literally means to stop cough. Um, just so sad is a great formula for coughs. Now it's also not quite strong enough to really deal with those exterior. It has a little bit, but it's not quite strong enough to deal with those exterior uh, present that exterior presentation. Um, uh, so what I've done, so that bounce back is also a formula that I designed to go with Giososan so that you can both get, um, so you can still be treating those exterior presentations, the fever chills um, and body aches, uh, as well as now dealing with the cough. So in step two, if you've got basically a presentation where um, patient still has some of those exterior symptoms, as well as these new interior symptoms with the cough and the lungs, then we, what I recommend is that you combine the two formulas. So you're gonna, <clears throat> um, and now as practitioners, you can combine it however you want. Um, if you've got a good relationship with this patient and you're able to see them, or if you're able to kind of really get to do something very, um, and you might not be able to this winter, but if you can do something virtually and you've got a good sense that um, there's just a little bit of a cough, but it's primarily still in the exterior, then have your patients take a little bit more, bounce back, and just a little bit of breathe clear. Um, if you've got a sense that the exterior symptoms are now kind of secondary to the cough, which has become major, then you might have them take primarily um, a breathe clear, but add in a few uh, tablets of bounce back. If you really think it's equal, then we kind of recommend you kind of go with our most kind of convenient recommendation here, which is instead of taking three pills at once, take two at once, but take one of each, uh, one of bounce back, one of breathe clear, um, and instead of doing it twice a day, now do it three times a day or maybe four times a day. Um, and this will get you to six to eight tablets. 10 tablets might be a little bit much, uh, but when treating something acute, when treating, when treating gamao, we often wanna, like I said, we wanna hit it hard. And so that often 
um, does call for um, more servings, more administrations in a day. Uh, so don't be afraid to kind of have your patients do this stuff uh, three times a day, or if you kind of do it in this kind of one, this one-to-one -one kind of um, one of each um, uh, sort of program here, have them maybe even do it four times a day if you need to kind of, uh, at least for a day or two to kind of really get on top of it. Uh, and then lastly, you might kind of end up in a kind of a final wrap up. You might, all the fever and chills and all that might kind of go away. You might still be left with a kind of a lingering cough. Um, uh, or you might also have patients who just come in with a cough. They really don't have any of the exterior stuff. That's all resolved long before you get, long before they come to you. But that cough lingers. That's really when just so sad or breathe clear is a great option. Um, and so, um, yeah, if, the, if those fever, chills, body aches, those symptoms are gone, it's just mostly the cough and the phlegm and the throat irritations. Just go with Breathe Clear. It's a great formula. It's really designed, and, and those of you who remember it from your uh, formulary classes, it's really designed both for the kind of the acute cost, but also these more chronic costs. Um, and it's a great thing to kind of help help with the wrap up if, if, if you need it, if things don't kind of resolve at the same same pace. And this will depend on kind of when they get to you, when the patients get to you, and when you have a chance to kind of uh, begin with your interventions. So I call it a two-step. I call it a two-step approach, uh, but there is kind of this third wrap-up step too that you may may encounter. So be be aware of that. Breathe Clear is going to be your your solution here. Uh, so that's the basics of um, our two new formulas and how they work together. Um, I hope this helps make sense of it for you all. Um, I'm going to um, at some point do an additional uh, webinar just on bounce back since that's, that's a proprietary formula. And I'm sure some of you want to know more about the actual herbs that are in there and why they're in there. Um, so uh, like I said, it's been, it's, it really emerged out of some very interesting research. But uh, for the moment, hopefully though, you've got a good bit, good foundations for why the form, why we've done the formulas the way we have, what are the principles, principles behind them? Um, and how we think they can be this amazing solution for uh, all your patients this winter. Uh, this is also, I, I would point out too, the sort of thing that I, I personally think everyone should like have in their medicine cabinet like this winter. Like, um, so I would urge you to kind of um, be in touch with the patients, let them know that, that this is a, that we've, that there is a sort of great solution out there um, and say, and have encourage them to sort of like get some on hand, have some on hand. Uh, so that they don't come to you two or three days in when it's starting to get a little bit more complicated um, and, uh, and they can be on top of it and they can kind of be getting back on their feet much faster and avoiding um, any, of the, any of the complications that um, come when this goes yet even deeper and you've got now you've got a pneumonia or something much more, um, much more critical. Um, Okay, you all, well, stay in touch. This is again, like I said, hopefully the first of a, of a number of webinars. Uh, reach out to us through our Facebook group. Uh, we'll be following up with the Pulse newsletter and um, looking forward to hearing more feedback from you. And I'm always available to talk with you more about um, the formulas. Uh, thanks again. John, I'm, I'm stopping recording unless you want to.